Hello, my name is Gregory Miller and I'm 40 years old from Suffolk, New York and I live to eat. My passion for food was stirred around 1999 when two things happened to me. First, I got a job at the Supper Club in New York City. Now the Supper Club was an event space and restaurant and I was actually hired as the audio engineer. But I found myself spending more and more time in the kitchen and our chef, Chef Mark, was kind enough to take me under his wing and show me the ins and outs of a, of a professional kitchen. And I was just fascinated. The second thing that happened to me was that I got a roommate. My roommate Rob turned out to be the saucier for Les Panas, one of the shockingly low number of five-star restaurants in New York. When Rob would get home around five o'clock in the morning, which would be right around the time I got home, what would happen? Rob would make us breakfast. Swordfish risotto with a bottle of French wine was kind of standard fare for us at five o'clock in the morning. Those two events stirred a real passion in me for cooking, which led to a couple of kitchen tools, which led to a couple of cookbooks, which eventually led to my now world-famous sangria party, where I made 20 gallons of sangria, two reds, two whites, and tapas for about 50 people. And in the past seven years that I've been throwing this party, I haven't made the same recipe twice. During the past 15 years as an audio engineer, I've been fortunate enough to travel to all 48 continental United States and 10 countries. But well, in all my travels, I've discovered that Spanish cuisine is easily my favorite cuisine. I've also found that some of the craziest foods easily reside right here in America. Some time spent in Colorado introduced me to Rocky Mountain Oyster Soup. And of course, being a New Yorker, I had no idea what this was, but it looked good, it was cold, it was soup, and it seemed like the way to go. It wasn't until after I finished my entire bowl of soup that my waitress and the restaurant decided to inform me that what I had just ingested with sheep testicles. You can imagine my surprise. Easily the last time I've been to Colorado. Also in my travels, I seem to bump into, well, they say things are bigger in Texas, and I can prove it. I was with a film crew on the road for almost two months. We were broke, we were hungry, and we needed a place to eat. And we had heard about a restaurant that served up a 48-ounce steak. And the deal was that if you could finish the steak, you could eat for free. But not just you, your entire table. All it took was one person. And of course, the entire film crew looked to me because I easily have a reputation for being able to eat my own body weight and food. So there we are, five of us sitting at a restaurant and a 48 ounce steak lands in front of me. All eyes are on me. 30 minutes later, my steak, my salad, and my buddy's meal, we were all eaten for free, very fat, very happy, and continued on the road. My time spent on the road with my fat and happy film crew taught me an extremely important lesson, and that's who you are and what you do should be the same thing. There should be no distinction between work and play, and it's that lesson that I took to heart. I have three passions in life. Cooking and eating, which I can easily lump together as one. Traveling and production. I've spent the past 15 years as an audio engineer putting on shows for everyone from rock bands to presidents. I have cooked meals for two people, five people, for 50 people, and I have traveled around the world. And it's this combination and this wide-eyed enthusiasm that makes me the perfect man to host Live to Eat. I can be put in any situation and make the most of it. I have no problem meeting new people, I have no problem going, going to new places, and I am fearless when it comes to whatever it is that's on my plate. So until we meet again, explore your world, eat well, and live to eat.